Hello everybody and welcome back. In the approximately nine to ten months that I've owned this vehicle and doing videos on the L322, there's one topic that consistently comes up and we're going to talk about it today and that is tires. Now all of the questions I get around what I've done to this vehicle and the modifications on either YouTube comments, direct messages or Instagram are all to do with upgrading tires on an L322. So I've taken all of those questions and I think there are about 65. Now some of these answers have been buried in other videos, I know that, but I wanted to make it in one video so everyone knows what type of tires and all the questions that people have been asking and put them into basically five categories of questions. So here you go. So the first question is, what size tires am I running on the L322? And the answer to that is 275 55-20s. Now I'm not going to get into, you shouldn't be going off-road with 20-inch rims. There's no point. This vehicle was not built to take 18-inch rims. I have six pop Brembo's on the front, glowing nicely red as you can see. It, there are no rims at this point in time that will fit over those calipers to allow me to run 18-inch wheels. So the choice that I chose was to go up two sizes to 275, 55, 20s. Now the standard fit tires for these is 255, 50, 20s. So clearly I've got more sidewall and I've got more width. So, I'm running 275 55 R20s. These are Cooper Discoverer AT3 Sport all-terrain tires. Love them. Now, the other question I get all the time is, what size rims are you running? Wheels. So these are off an L405. These are model 1066. Now, these have got a slightly better offset as far as pushing the wheel and rim out of the wheel well. And you can see here, when we go down the side of the vehicle, you can clearly see they've pushed the wheel out. So the offset, I think this will be the positive offset, is further out than what comes with a standard set of rims that came with this vehicle. So the wheels that I'm running, L405 model 1066. So question three. Do these tires rub? And the answer is yes, but with a caveat. They only rub on my driver's side of the vehicle. So on the front and the back is the only places these tires rub on my vehicle. On my passenger side, so that will be the near side to where I drive, so I'm obviously right-hand drive. If you're left-hand drive, you'll be on the driver's side. There is no rubbing at all. So as you can see, on the rear, I have worn through where the fuel bulge is, and that's happened over a period of time. Now it's gone all the way through, you can see that, but there's nothing for me to do as far as changing anything there. It's worn away that bulge on the lower end. Now there are things that you can do. You can heat up that liner and push that bulge in to avoid any rubbing but I still believe that you will get rubbing. Now, why do I think I've got rubbing on the driver's side? Good question, I'm not 100% sure. On the front, if I go into opposite lock, so I turn my wheel to the driver's side, I will get rubbing on the inner fender at the back of the wheel, where the wheel hits the fender liner on the back of the wheel arch. But those are the only two places that I have got rubbing with this vehicle. So. Does it rub? Yes, but only in two places, front and rear on the driver's side. Now a common rubbing point when you go bigger, and again I'm running much wider tires, 255 standard, 275 on this one, they're going to rub that bulge where the fuel filler goes down into that inner liner. But again, you can fix that by taking the inner liner out, getting a heat gun, push it in, you should not have any rubbing. Now the other question I get, and this one comes up a lot, is what size spare are you running now that I'm on bigger tires? So again, I'm on 275, 55, 20s. If I was to get a spare 
same rim, same size, that will not fit in the rear load space. You would not be able to close uh, the door, number one, and number two, it will not fit in the cutout. It's not built for that size of tire. Now, people have said, take all the air out, get it to fit. That might work, but quite honestly, what's the point? So I have an L405 Space Saver in the back. Now, those of you that follow the channel and know that my load space is basically stocked full of stuff, the question now comes is how can you get access to your spare? Well, I can do it. I take the fridge out. I have to disconnect uh, the water tank that I've got in the back, push everything forward. The Nomad Kitchen needs to come out. I've tried it. In about 20 minutes, I can get everything out, push forward to give me enough space to get into the load space to pull out the spare. So I can do that. Now, of course, if I was to do that, the question then is, what are you going to do with the spare if you need to switch it? Well, the answer to that is it's going to have to go in the back seat somewhere. Now, I also carry a tyre repair kit. I've got an ARB repair kit. I've got an ARB jaw compressor. The way I look at it is this. If I had damage to a tyre that deflated it, I can fix it on the trail with my tyre repair kit. Now, if it's a catastrophic piece of, you know, it's damaged, completely shredded, nothing you could do about it, I've got to get that spare out. That's going to be unlikely because I'm not rock crawling, I'm not running these at low pressures that's going to pop it off the rim. To me, it's just not going to happen. So for me, belt and braces is I have a tyre repair kit, I have a compressor, and then I also have my load space, um, space saver, uh, tire in the back. At a pinch, I can use it. Now other people have said, you're going to screw up your four-wheel drive system, you're going to break this, that and the other if you go down that route of running it with that spare. Now if that space safer is on there, that is not meant to go off-roading in, it is not meant to be doing 70 mile an hour down the, down the motorway, all it's meant for is bolting it on, crawling off a trail or down a road to get to the nearest village or town that has somewhere that can repair your tire. Worst case scenario, go order another one. So, to me, the chances of it actually happening, touch wood, are quite slim because of the nature of the type of off-roading that I do. Now, you can definitely pick up a puncher on the road. I think the chances of actually getting a puncher on the road through a nail or a screw or something that's fallen off another vehicle is probably much higher than going off-road. I have a L405 Space Saver Spare, and to me, that's good enough for what I do. Is do I reduce my tire pressures when I go off-road? And the answer is sometimes. Now, there are trains of thought is, don't be an idiot. Ronnie Dahl talks about this, reduce your tire pressures. So some of the gravel trails that I'm on, I do reduce it. If I go on some rock crawling type trails, I reduce it again. So I run about 45 on the road, normally loaded. If I go off road and I know I'm doing gravel, I'll drop them to about 32. If I know I'm going to do some sort of slower rock crawling, then I'll drop them to 28. But that's as low as I've gone and probably as low as I will go. Because I think any lower than that, I'm then probably asking for trouble because it will start exposing the rim to some rocks if you go through those types of things. So, so yes, I do reduce my tire pressures as and when I need it. But I also have, remember, I've got an onboard compressor as well. So I have the ability to be able to drop tire pressures and then when I'm finished, pump them back up. I will say that I have driven this on 32 PSI on the road, not fast, small side tracks, uh, you know, A roads, B roads, and they've been fine. And I've also got out and felt them to make sure that they're not heating up. But I think, you know, any lower than that on the road, you're probably asking for trouble. Uh, so I have done that. So the other question I get all the time is, is it lifted? And the answer to that is no. It's not physically lifted. So I don't have Johnson rods on it or any of those types of things. I don't. I've not gone into the gap tool and lifted it either. But I do have an easy lift kit. Now, to me, the beauty of the easy lift kit is everything stays factory. But if I want to be able to pump it up plus 25 mil, I can go into the app, which is the bolt-on ECU, and press the button and it will raise it up plus 25. It'll go up to plus 75 if I need to. So I have the ability to be able to control how much I need to lift the vehicle up.
So with the easy lift kit, and again, video up here, I have far more control than going into the gap tool. I'm taking all three um, height modes and shifting it up an inch or whatever I plan on doing. So if you go into the gap tool and you say, I want to increase normal road or off-road by one inch, all three of those modes go up one inch. You cannot control one or the other. And the beauty of the easy lift kit is it allows you to control either lowering or hiring and the three extra uh, heights that you can do above factory. So it gives me far more control about when I want to lift that up. So no, it's not lifted. No, I don't have anything like joints and rods or extension rods, but I do have the easy lift kit that gives me a lot more control and flexibility on how high I want to bring the vehicle. So that's my wrap for tires. Hopefully that answered the four major categories of questions that I get. So if you do want to start looking at putting bigger wheels and tires on your L322, then this is what I've been through and this is my experience. So if you like this video, please like the video, share it, subscribe. 70% of the people that watch my content are not subscribed. So those of you who are, thank you. I really appreciate it. The channel is really growing now, which is still blows my mind. It goes in spurts with subscribers, but it's going up, which is good. And we're well over four and a half thousand watch hours of content, which is incredible when you think about it. So to keep me motivated, please subscribe, help the channel grow. And with that, I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.